Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. It's your turn. This is it's, one of your beers. It's one of my beers. This goes back a ways. Uh, this is a beer <laughs> that we brewed on the sidewalk uh, in front of your store on Big Brew Day. Yep, on May the 4th. In celebration of... Uh, Big Brew Day. Of National Homebrew Day, which yep. was later on that week or something. That's I don't right. Remember. So we just set up uh, our little brewery there. It was kind of fun with our high gravity system, my high gravity system. Yep. Which is, I've got the little brother to the one that you've got, mm -hmm. but it did a great job. Yeah. And uh, we brewed the all grain version of my Ozark Amber kit. So, and that was really, I think that was the first kit that I ever put together for the store. Oh. Huh? I'm pretty sure. There you go. I, I think that your 15 minute pale ale was the first one that we did. And then I think the next one that we did was, or that I did, on, was this Ozark Amber. So and, we brewed the all grain version. And this was your first no chill batch. That's right. So we did a no chill, which you've been playing with. And one of the challenges of brewing at the store was that we didn't have any way to really cool the beer quickly and efficiently and all that. So you said, well, let's try no chill. And I was like, cool. Yeah. So let me run through the uh, brewing process just really quickly. It's a brew in the bag uh, setup. We used seven gallons of water to start with. Mm -hmm. We, you know, mashed in, ran the mash as normal. Conversion was complete. The grain bill uh, is eight pounds of pale ale malt. We use Brees pale ale, pale malt. It has four ounces of melanoidin, four ounces of crystal malt, four ounces of special B, and an ounce of black patent malt. Mm -hmm. Then we hopped at 60 minutes, we hopped a half ounce. And this is where it gets a little different from the traditional way of brewing. So we were concerned, I'll, I'll, this will make sense in a second. We were concerned about if it was no chill and we put all the hops in and it sat there and extracted bitterness, mm -hmm. that it would cause a, an issue with the balance of the beer. So what we did was we held out some of the hops and we dry hopped with them. I used, we used a half an ounce of Columbus at 60 minutes, a half an ounce at 30 minutes, which we would normally use the ounce at 60, I believe. Then, um, we dry hopped everything else, which was an ounce of Amarillo, an ounce of Mosaic, and an ounce of Willamette. And that went in as a dry hop, those three. In the fermenter. In the fermenter. And what right. was the yeast that you used? Uh, an Imperial flagship. Okay. So there you have it. That's the beer. And it's been very interesting. We said we weren't going to talk about this, but I want to talk about <laughs> it. But, we, but there's an issue with head retention, but not every single pour. So it's very weird. Yeah, and, and if, you, if you watch the show, you, <clears throat> you saw uh, in earlier episodes that I was having trouble with head retention. And I, I th discovered that uh, if I switched from using the, the powdered Cascade automatic dishwashing power, powder on my small fermenters, that problem went away. I switched to PBW. Right. Now, uh, the, the only... I mean, the fact that you're having head retention problems <laughs> and you used my gear, my no-chill container, I'm pretty sure I've washed that with regular dish soap mm -hmm. and, and rinsed that up pretty well. And I don't think I've ever had any head retention problems with that no-chill uh, container. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know either. And and I'm, I'm really curious to see how this is going to pour. Um, now watch you pour this, it'll have a l luscious, it'll hit, it'll be perfect. head. <laughs> but, but I... We have managed to consume a number of these already. <laughs> and, um, In the interest of science. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they're like, it's highly carbonated. Oh, and I, I just use carb tabs. It's bottle conditioned. Right. And I just use the little one pill carb tab. And let's see what we get. Pour it with gusto. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, look at that. Huh. Okay. Gorgeous. Yeah. So, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> well, could it be that, I mean, one problem, one issue that, uh, that I had been having, I think, with my, some of my small batches was I wasn't waiting, I was consuming them too early. I wondered about that, absolutely wondered about that, mm -hmm. that um, I don't know when I started testing this beer, two weeks in, three weeks in, I don't really remember, but no head, no head, no head, but highly carbonated. But here we go. We've, uh, this beer has been sitting in my little hop uh, closet at the store now for, well, since, since, we bought, since I bottled it. A couple months. A couple months. And look at that head. Yeah. So never Sticking mind. Around. I feel like <laughs> Emily Latella. Well, I mean, I think it's a good to, 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 to talk about it. 
Yeah. Be because, you know, no matter how long you brew, something's going to happen that you're like, what the, what is the, <laughs> and sometimes patience is the, is the key. I've been telling more and more of my customers, particularly new brewers, that exact thing. I told a guy that today, it was about wine, but the same point that a lot of the things that we do wrong is we don't wait. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we just don't wait long enough to try whatever it is, whether we're bottling it too quickly, whether we're racking it over to the secondary too quickly, whether we're trying to get every last ounce, every last ounce of beer or wine. So how come there's all this crap floating around in my beer? <laughs> well, did you get all of it? Yeah, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> this is delicious. Oh, yeah. And so the experiment, though, was to see how the hops would play. Right. As Cause much you, as anything. Because you put a boatload of, of hops in the fermenter, mm -hmm. and uh, up until we had brewed this beer, I had done no dry hopping uh, and, uh, it, you know, using the no-chill thing. And I wasn't getting a lot of hop character. They're delicious beers, but, you know, they weren't super hoppy or juicy or whatever. Right. This has a ton of yeah. the juicy, uh, fresh uh, hop character in there. Mm, no and, and the bitterness is really balanced nicely. Uh, the malt is uh, delicious as well. Mm. I think that mm. was a really good call, and it was yeah. your suggestion. Mm -hmm. I, I would not have thought of it. I would have just brewed the beer normally and, and put it on out. And these were hops that you normally would have put in near the near it or at the end of the boil right. in a normal beer. But we decided, since this was going into the no-chill container and it was going to be hot for a lot longer, uh, you know, overnight, that we decided mm. to save those, those you know, fragile, juicy hops for the dry hop, and it worked. It worked great. I'm really happy with this beer. Um, wow, mm -hmm. I mean, it's really nice. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. It, I was, I was, well, I was concerned with drinking the ones that didn't have any head, and I was concerned about moving the hops around in such a way that it, it kind of wouldn't be the same beer anymore. But, but it is. It's yeah. got, it's got that that nice. You know, caramel notes from the Special B and uh, the other crystal malts that are in there. Um, it's nice and spicy. Mm -hmm. um, it really kept those, those hops are almost IPA-like. Mm -hmm. um, without a ton of bitterness. Without a ton of bitterness, but yeah. But the, the, the flavor. Yeah, in fact, I, as I recall, when I wrote the original copy for the, for the website, I was like, if you like hops, you'll love this beer, but it won't well, knock you, you over with yeah, bitterness. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I think about it. And... Wow, that really, that's really interesting that moving through different ways of brewing and different techniques that you have to think a little bit about how you're going to apply the ingredients and when you're going to apply them, in mm -hmm. this case hops, um, which can make a world of difference. I, I mean, we, we haven't done it and probably won't, but it would be interesting to brew the beer traditionally and then compare it to this. Yeah. Well, that might not be a bad thing. But, <laughs> but at any rate, well... This was, this was great. So no yeah. chill is a thing, and it's a good thing. <clears throat> yeah, and you can find the, uh, the recipe and the kits mm -hmm. uh, at stevesbrewshop.com. Dot com. If you, want, if you want to get it from the source. Yeah, for sure. It's a good beer. Yeah, great job. Thanks. Oh, and, we, uh, and by the way, we had uh, ribs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were really good. And I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, ins I'm inserting video of the ribs right here. Oh, they were really good. I didn't have anything to, to rub them with, you know, like you rub your ribs. So I just had some mustard and some salt. I think that's what went on them. <laughs> yeah. They were great. Yeah, it was just like yellow mustard and salt. Yep. It was, they were so good. <laughs> and pecan chips. And pecan, that's right. Pecan, pecan chips. S smoked over pecan. Not, not pecan. No, not, not pecan. And the pecan goes under the bed. Pecan has a light <laughs> smoke, not a heavy smoke. Hickory mm -hmm. and oak are heavier. Cherry's heavier. Apple's a little bit lighter. But pecan is very light. It's very delicate smoke. So... Remember that, all you barbecue heads. There you go. Bonus content. Bonus content. All right. Cheers. Happy brewing, everybody. Happy brewing. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our brewer's logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com.
the hazards of brewing so, <laughs> and barbecuing at the same time. What did you almost add to the beer? Well, uh, the pecan chips because <laughs> I just I just finished adding a little pecan wood to the ribs, and then it was time to hop the beer, and I just instinctively went for the pecan, which I'm sure would be good, but I think we'll skip that step today.